Hey, thanks for stopping in. I'm John Zadar. This is May 17th. It is Tuesday and you're watching On Top and Hot. What I do on this show is I like to share my DD of OTC stocks and penny stocks that are moving on the markets for one reason or another. And sometimes the reasons they move just don't make sense, but they're moving anyways. So today I've got a few stocks that we're going to take a look at that were top runners. And as we're looking at them, we're going to glance through the ones that were running for silly reasons, just so you can see what's happening. Come I got it all lined up for us. So as is the case virtually in all my videos, we're starting here at the otcmarkets.com website for one simple reason. It's never outdated. FINRA and the SEC update this every single day. So why waste your time going anywhere else on the internet searching for current information when you now know where it is? Now we're going to use this site just for that as well. I've got three stocks that we're running today. They were the top runners and I know that's a subjective term because it's more to me than just percentage gain. I want to know, did it have a legitimate catalyst? Was it running for a real reason I can count on and project? Two, did it have a lot of trades? Was there a lot of attention around that stock? So these are things I'm looking for. Volume counts, all of that counts, but without a real catalyst and without a lot of people around it, Eh, it may not move the whole day. So we're also going to look at the other stocks that were running, and there really weren't a lot of them, and the silly flaky reasons they were running for, just at a glance so you can know what's going on. And the way we do that, they got a link here. I love this page. This is a treasure to me, current market. If you haven't been here, folks, check this out. This is absolutely fantastic. First off, this page covers all the stocks on the entire OTC market. See how big this page is? That's it. And this breaks it all down. All we have to do is drill down. There are 12,290 different companies on the stock market. Today we did $2.1 billion worth of business and that's average. We do that virtually every day regardless of how many shares we sell. And today we sold a bad low number, $6.7 billion. To give you an idea, a year ago we were doing between 40 and 50 billion shares a day. So this is really anemic. And even our trades have fallen. Last week we were at a low number of 350,000. We are now down to 291,000. So everything is dropping except the dollar value. But these trades are very valuable now. There are 12,290 companies that want and are fighting for these trades. And the ones that get the most trades have the most people paying attention to them and that's where our price action comes in. So this is the most active stocks across the entire OTC market. And you can look at them in a variety of ways. You can look at the gainers or the losers. Of course, we're gonna look at the gainers. You can look at stocks just over a dollar, just over a nickel, or you can look at every bloody stock on the OTC market. That's what I do. So just click that off and you're going to get a page just like that. One big long page of all the gainers. Now remember, this covers all 12,000 plus stocks. So these are the biggest rippers on the entire market. So this one here, CBPI did do 16,000. Now that could have been a reverse split. I saw a lot of reverse splits today and they constitute those as gains. And we know it's not, nobody's getting that gain. But let's look at a legitimate one. Now when I say legitimate, these black diamonds are not legitimate. These are expert market stocks. Basically, they are stocks that have been pulled off the open market and put into timeout because they're late filing. So we can't bid on them. Once they catch up on their filings, they'll be back on the open market. But in the meantime, no need to consider them. But you got stocks like this one here, 610% gains, only 100 shares and only one trade. So you might be looking at the charts and see, whoa, look at that, 610% gains. And you think that's the one I want to get into. Do you want to sit around all day waiting for the next person? No, you want a big number. So I look down this trade column here, which is the most relative to what I'm searching. But we've got all the information here, our ticker, our price, the percentage change, which is what order they are in. You've even got how much money they generate in sales from their stock today. And of course, the share volume. And I stroll down this column here and I look for numbers that are big. Now, what do we call a big number? Well, we're looking at it at the end of the day. So I want to see at least a 50. I mean, that is really the floor, maybe even the basement floor. Nothing less than that. You're talking the whole day, 50 trades. That's not a lot. So 
Coming down here, you can see we do have a lot of big gainers with hardly any trades, and then you got 758 trades there. Folks, that could be 758 people. I doubt it's two people trading 758 times between them, but I know that's a lot more people than that. I know that. So I consider the crowd factor here. And then the proof in the pudding is they've moved 15.7 million shares and they got 214% gains today. This is GHMP. We're going to put this on the list of one of the stocks we look at. Now I'm going to tell you right now, this is top dog on the entire OTC market. Not in any price category, I mean the top dog. Yes, there were other stocks here that ran bigger, right there. But there was no price action. There was no trading on that. That was a freaky fluke. This was a real traded stock today, and nobody comes close to 758 trades today. Now, don't think that's an absolutely high number. I see 1,500, 2,200 trades in a day, just not recently. So today, that is top dog. Let's keep scrolling for 50 and above. Let's see what we can find and keep an eye on our percentages. This is the entire OTC market. We are now under 100%. Here's one, 121 trades. They did move a few million shares, 86% gains. This is inks, just over four cents. So it all looks good. So why wouldn't we look at it? Freaky reason, it's not a big catalyst. Inks is a Chinese company. They deal with new power. That's the way they like to refer to it. It could be charging EVs, creating a new battery, working with solar power, something like that. And they came out with a filing yesterday or today, the NT10K, which I have tagged the excuse filing. <laughs> when you're going to be late filing, but you don't want everyone to think you're ignoring it, you file the NT10K and tell us your reason. What's your excuse for not filing on time? And they say, we're trying our best. We've done everything we can. We're just not going to make it. However, when you read these filings, they have it built in. You can read it there that you have to file before the 15th of the month or you get a five day delay period which is really to the 20th, right? And they say that they're going to be able to get their filings in before the end of that delay period. So they say they'll have them before the 20th. That's why it ran 86%. The next one we see is 227 trades, millions of shares moved, 75% gains, good price, two and a half cents, Pack V. Pack V had a soft core catalyst today. They had news come out. It was a preliminary financial peak. It wasn't the actual financials. It was just a peak at them. They say that they think they're going to do a little over $10 million this last quarter. Compared to the same time period last year, it's a 43% increase. That's it. They got 75% rise out of that. The next one where you can see coming down is 149 trades, 50% gains, just under two cents, UNQL. We're going to look at that. That's the second stock we have on our list here because they have real news with a real catalyst. They had real gains, moved real shares, and had a lot of trades. All right, let's keep on going. Just a few more to look at because we're down to 30% now. Seems I've missed one here somewhere, <laughs> but I'm going to find it. RSPI, Pat's on the floor, but look. There's our last big number, 149. We're down to 30 something percent. So I am literally scraping the floor. 56 trades did move a few million shares, a couple million. 33% gains, double zero seven five. This is RSPI. RSPI is a biopharmaceutical company that works with neurological disorders and sleep apnea. They too did the exact same thing as the last company, filed an N. T10K, the excuse form. And theirs is the same exact reason. Not that we haven't tried everything possible. We're just not going to be on time, but we should have it in before the delay period is up. So they said also by May 20th. There you go. 33% gains. Now we are down to 32% gains with 43. All right. All right. I'm under the floor. And I'm going to tell you folks, I had to go here. This is GNRS. They had news today. I consider it legitimate catalyst. They had 32% gains. They're at two bucks. Only moved 14,000 shares. Now that is weak. I will give you that. But the catalyst is strong. I looked at it and it's like, well, yeah, I could see something happening here. So I figured this one a legitimate one to show you. We'll keep scrolling here, see what else we get. 
I'm just going to go a little bit further because we're only down to 30, 25 percent right now. 154. Uh, this is the Marijuana Company of America. They came out with their financials. They reported, uh, what was it that they did? 1.2 million in revenue, I think it was, this last quarter. And the same quarter last year, they did $34,000 worth of business. So they had strong earnings, but that is a triple zero. Coming up to double zeros, this is where I would normally look at this stock. And they did a lot of shares. They did 105 million shares with 154 trades. And that looks to be about it. We've got one more here, and I am now under 25%. This one had 214 trades with 14 million plus shares moved. Only 23% gains. This is ILST. ILST is a shell company. There is no business with it. It's hollow. It's just a clean ticker. And it's clean because Karen Courier salvaged this company. I do believe it was on the expert market. I know it had no management. She got the company, cleaned it up, and it's sitting out there waiting for a customer to buy the ticker, if you will. A reverse merger. And she made a tweet on Twitter, of course, that's where you tweet, right? <laughs> she made a tweet that the sale of ILST looks promising and forthright coming. So there you go. This one ran 23% uh, based on that tweet. So we've got three companies we're going to take a look at here. GNRS, UNQL, and the top dog of the day, GHMP. So let's run on over to GHMP first. So who exactly is the top dog? It's Good Hemp Inc. Bet you didn't see that coming, did you? No, I didn't either. GHMP finished the day at 0 .0, oh heck, let's just call that five cents with over 217% gains. I think that number is actually a little bigger than the one we just saw. She's on the pink tier, she's current, she's got a transfer agent verified, but she doesn't have that verified profile we like to see over here. Now, it's not going to prevent the shares from being sold or anything, but it is reassuring to see it there. Now, as you've probably guessed, this company's into hemp, right? This is a North Carolina-based company. Uh, they exploit particular segments of the hemp industry. They're looking for niche markets. And they have already secured listings for their products with regional and national grocery stores and convenience chain stores. So they are set up. Now, when they say niche markets, folk, they right now are focusing in on beverages, but they could focus in on anything. Niche markets in the hemp industry are broad. There's got to be at least a hundred of them. It could be paper or plastics that biodegrade in certain time periods. They could be making feminine products or diapers, sunglasses, petrol fuel, hardwood that's harder than hardwood. I mean, literally edibles, the list goes on and on and on. So they could do anything. They're just not into smoking and eating. But right now they are working on beverages. Now the company did not have any news come out today. There was no news press for a catalyst. However, they did come out with an 8K today. And I think people read it. Don't you? <laughs> this is what I say, folks. You want to look at 8Ks. There's lots of juicy information in those 8Ks. That's where they talk about the mergers and the acquisitions. And in this 8K, they refer to an 8K that was put out back in March. And between the two, boom, this company took off. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, they normally do 1.3 million shares. Not bad. Today, they did 17 million. What, what is that? Like uh, 10, uh, 12 times as much as their normal volume? It's a big kick up. But you want to see what's really why 17 million is a big kick? I'm going to show you. Look at that float, folks. Look at that float. 7 million. That is a legitimate low float. There's only 28 million outstanding. 7 million folks made this run for one reason. There weren't enough shares to cover what was sold today. They sold 17 million shares and there's only 7 million out there to be sold. Supply and demand kicked in today. There weren't enough shares so the price started to rise. If you want my shares, I need more money for them than that. So before they could sell those shares, somebody had to let them go. Somebody who bought them had to let them go. Holders were stifling the market today. So even though there's 7 million available, half of them may not want to sell their shares. 
may be holding them. There may only be three million going around and around, people reselling them and reselling them, and the price just keeps climbing like on game. So this is very enticing. What are the financials on this company? Well, they're not bad. Well, kinda. If we take those three zeros, throw that behind there, they did $1.2 million. But look how much it cost them. $1.1 million. They got to keep basically $100,000 out of $1.2 million. They're gonna have to work on that profit margin. That's all I can say about that. And if we look at their quarterlies, well, I see the quarterlies don't go anywhere past the end of last year either. I'll bet you we see a filing over there, or maybe they're even late. Let's go see. Disclosures is where we need to go anyways. There's the 8K we're gonna take a look at. Oh, there is a filing. Well, it's not actual financial filing. A 10Q is a quarterly financial filing. An NT is what we were talking about. It's the excuse filing. So let's take a quick look at this just to see if they say they're going to be on time. It's a real short. That's it. That's the entire thing. And they say here the accountants could not complete the required financial statements. The auditors could not complete their review. Uh, management could not complete the management discussion and analysis. They could not meet the deadline. No, they don't even put in there that they are going to get it done within the five days because it says right here if you are late you can report on or before the fifth calendar day following the pre prescribed due date and they normally mention that here they did not so it looks like they will be late I was not aware of that now back here on june 11th or june 11th on the uh, march 11th this one here tells about a deal that they were going to make. On March 8, 2022, Good Hemp Inc. entered in a plan and agreement of merger with Petro X Solutions, a Wyoming corporation. And then today's 8K tells us on May 11, 2022, the parties closed the merger and filed the articles of merger. There you go. It's closed. The deal is done. Now, I don't know where it's going to go from here. There's information. There's probably news presses in the back to give us more information about this company. A little DD on this PXS, which is called Petro X, wouldn't hurt at all. But that's the reason the company was running. A merger was announced a few months ago, and today it closed without a news press, and it ran 17 million shares on a 7 million float and got 217% gains. I don't want to see that chart. Come on, come on, let's go see. Well, as luck would have it, I found my thinkorswim. <laughs> this is the trading platform we're going to use to do all of our charting. You can get it if you don't have a trading platform just by signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. No, I don't make anything for saying that. I'm just letting you know where it's at. Keep your account open and you can use this just like I am. So we are looking at GHMP. That's a six-month, four-hour chart. And what stands out is all that volume. Wow. Look at all this volume picking up, picking up, really getting strong. That's the one token sign you want to pay attention to. She had a high back here of 99 cents and a low here of just over a penny. Has been far under the 200 all this time. And it doesn't look like she's quite there yet, but boy, is she close and she's been running flat for a very long time technicals are strong at this very moment really strong let's come on in on that 20 day one hour look 20 day one hour okay we had a big pump here folks now what day is this five six i went and looked now first off i didn't take you to the news because there is no news that's the only reason i forget to show you the news page because there's never anything there Totally empty. No news presses at all. Maybe there's something out there online, but not here on the OTC market. So I don't know why this ran. There was no filing on this day either, but that is a huge jump. A huge jump. That went from uh, 1.2 cents up to 7.6 cents. What is that? Like four, 450% gains right there. Gave it all back. Landed on the 50 day for a day or so fell hard and then took off today on that 8k and everything looks very strong right now too the cci is falling down anytime this is pointed down it's going to bring the price down a little bit and if it gets closer to the yellow or the red it's going to pull it down even faster everything else is good rsi is flaming in the red and the macd is a huge tsunami let's come down to five day five minute 
Wow, look at that. Coming down hard and ripping back up. That's what you call a recovery right there. Here comes our 200-day SMA because of these last few days of volume getting so strong. The price was erratic. That's all I can really say. It was under the 50, over, under, over. I really can't tell where it's showing any respect to. It's just chaotic here. Today, it blasted off. Now, remember, we got 17 million shares being sold when there's only 7 million shares on the open market. And you know not every single person was in the market today selling their shares. So there were less than 7 million shares. That's what makes this thing rise so fast. We had a uh, sideways area here, consolidation. This is where people were thinking about it, but it's also giving time. When this is going sideways, these SMAs are coming close. Look at the spread. Look at that spread here, folks. That's too far. That is a, a crash ready to happen. And the only way you avoid a crash is for the price to start going sideways until these SMA lines, the simple moving averages, come up close enough to it that it's comfortable and doesn't feel it's too far away from home. The rubber band stretches, it's got to come back. Do you want it to pop back or do you want to pull it back nice and gentle? And that's all they did here. Pulled it back nice and gentle and then took off again. Now it's come back down to it could religiously bounce off of this. It is right there again. Now the 50 is way down here. The 50 has been pushed because of this at the very end of the day. There were some people escaping. I can't read anybody's minds. The volume got low. Technicals are low. Although the CCI is the only thing pushing up right now. So what's my opinion on this stock? Well, the merger just happened just got completed today. So they're a bigger business that's going to be doing more. Some more DD is what's required. See where they're at, what stores they're dealing with, what products they got out there. See what this new company is providing to them. That's going to be what it's all about. But in saying that, I would anticipate growth. But we are in a down market. The OTC is anemic. We're not getting the trades we want. So you've got to be very careful where you put your money. Lots and lots of good stocks are falling on the OTC, folks. And it's got nothing to do with the company. Stocks are falling because there's nobody there trading. There are fewer and fewer people. What do I tell you? Crowds are what make the market move. That's where you get your price action. The fewer people we get the fewer stocks are going to move. And right now, a lot of investors have gotten out of the market. The money that they made in COVID, and we had a ton of new investors come in during COVID when they were all locked at home with no income. Oh yeah, they got free money. Let's go experiment on the stock markets. Some people made money. And it has been reported that all the money made has been lost. And now people are out of the market. They're just going back to jobs, trying to find secure incomes, can't gamble their income anymore. So the market's gotten very bleak. But I would keep my eye on GHMP nonetheless. You may want to pick up a small position. It did hit a low bubble here. And what kind of low bubble is that? Well, come on. We're low, folks. It hit a low bubble of a penny. She was here at 99 cents. Where was she, say, three years ago? Well, there's a silly high of $4.20, but her real high here is about uh, $2.30. But think about that. <laughs> think about that, folks. If you buy it at a nickel and it got anywhere up near there, you're talking uh, 2000 40000 4000 Is that 4,000% 4, gains up to there? Something like that. Look at that volume. Now is the time to consider it, folks. This was moving like this without any volume. Without any volume, now it's moving like that. I would definitely put GHMP on my watch list. And so the second company we found on that list was ticker UNQL, Unique Logistics International. Finished the day just under two cents at 0 0.018 with 50% gains. They're on the pink tier, they're current. They've got those beautiful green ticks for the verified profile and transfer agent, so they look good. They've also got independent directors. Now, you don't need these unless you have aspirations of uplisting. Doesn't matter if it's further up the OTC or all the way to the major exchange. In either case, you've got to have independent directors. If you're not going to uplist, you really don't need them at all. So, I think maybe they want to uplist. So, what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that Unique Logistics is a global logistics and freight 
forwarding company serving large customer base in the United States that includes well-known retailers and other companies that import and export goods to and from the United States. And if they require other things such as warehousing or customs or working at the marinas to bring the products in, take care of the excise taxes, the tariffs, the duties, all that stuff. They do it all. They've got a website over here. They tell us that they deal with all types of freight. It doesn't matter what it is, sporting goods, furniture, housewares, automobiles, toys, gifts. They move it by ship. They move it by plane. They move it by truck. They cover all the insurance. I mean, they're a full-fledged freight forwarding company. Now, the news I'm gonna share with you Honestly, I thought it came from today. I seen the stock running. I ran over here to the OTC, couldn't find anything current, went out to Google, found a piece of news. Well, I didn't look at the date. I just thought it was from today. It was actually from May 4th. And it is big news. It is a big piece of news, but I can't find anything else current. So I've got to presume that's why it's running today. Though there may be something else out there that I did miss. This stuff happens, obviously. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she normally does 5.5 million. Today, she did just about double, 12.5 million. Share structure, not as low a float as the last one by any means. We got 300 million. It's not a super high float, but it is a good size float. Financials, well, they've had nothing for the last few years, nothing at all. But this last year, they did $371 million, remembering to pull down those three zeros. But they had to pay $345 million for it, so they got to keep about $26 million. Not a bad profit margin, but wow, that's still a lot of money flowing through their hands. But fuel's expensive these days, isn't it? And what are their disclosures? We got anything new over here? Uh, no, we got nothing new here. So let's just jump on over to the news. So the news here goes up to February of 2021. So as I said, I did a Google search and this is what I found. Now I did not pay attention to the date right there, May 4th. So this was two weeks ago virtually, but the stock is moving now. Let's see what it says. Unique Logistics International Inc. has entered into a stock purchase agreement to acquire from Unique Logistic Holdings Limited, a Hong Kong corporation, their nine subsidiaries and affiliates. So basically, Unique Logistics International and Unique Logistics Holdings, these are two separate companies, but under the same umbrella. Now they're making them one company, so they're not two separate companies anymore. As consideration for the acquisition, the company agreed to pay $21 million plus a million dollar promissory note. So there's $22 million. The acquired companies are located in China, Hong Kong, India, Taiwan, the United Kingdom, and Vietnam. They are all specialist logistic companies in their countries of operations. And these companies are currently handling in their region business of our customers. So they're already working together. They're just now going to become one entity. So you've got nine subsidiaries coming into this one company. I don't know what this company makes. I don't know what their earnings are, but that's obviously going to be brought into their earnings as well. So this definitely requires a little bit more DD, but you can see it is a big catalyst. The freight company's just got nine subsidiaries. They've gotten full control of their freight delivery business around the world, many, many countries. Let's go take a look at that chart and see if there was any activity back on May 4th. Maybe it's been climbing all the way through. So we're looking at UNQL six month, four hour chart. We got a high here of eight cents and a low of about a penny just a day ago. Yeah, just yesterday. Ah, that may be why it jumped. Low bubble. That would make sense. This huge surge we had right here, I went and looked at the date. They had a filing come out about a public offering and it appears that they were units, meaning every share you buy, you get a warrant with it. Seems there was a lot of excitement about that, so it took off about 400% gains from two cents to eight cents, and that fell away very quickly. Landed hard on the 200 and sat here for almost a month. 
took a topple, tried to recover, and took a serious topple down to that low bubble, as I said, which was yesterday. Now, that may very well be the catalyst. This has a low bubble, but the stock has value. And a stock that hits a low bubble with value normally bounces off of it more than just a little recovery, but a gain. And that's exactly what we have here. A low bubble, a bounce back, and then a gain. She was under the 10 here, and now she's getting above it. Technicals are all beautiful on the four-hour chart. Looking at the 20-day, one-hour, we had uh, almost four cents 20 days ago. Heavy fall down under the 200. She tried to get back up to it, took another serious fall. Looks like a stair step here and hit that low bubble and is now starting to come back up, but isn't real close to the 200, which is where she's going to be reaching. She's got to get up there and the technicals look good just about ready to go on fire. MACD is over the signal line pushing up and we are above the green pushing up. This looks like it wants to continue. Let's look at the five day and five minutes, see if that's the case. So she was, the 200 was coming down very hard here and you can see she made a strong turn right there and is now flat and turning up. She is actually turning up right now, hit that low bubble, had the bounce off of yesterday, and then today she took off without any news today, contrary to what I thought. So she flew today from, where'd she start? Just about a penny up to almost two cents. So that's 100% gain right there. She fell back just a smidge, did start to topple, and I want to see, because that, that looks like it's just floating in midair. I want to see if that actually hits something, say, on the one hour well it's sitting on the 10 you see it it's sitting on the 10 right there and that's where it came down it banged right on the 10 so even though you can't see it there is something there it bounced off of you just have to move your perspective every now and then so at the end of the day the very end of the day we did have a push up and aftermarket squeaked out uh five minutes after the bell we had one sale there Everything looks very strong and in recovery mode right now, including the volume pushing up. This has a chance of actually running tomorrow. I'd put this on your list, UNQL, but even more for than a run for tomorrow, I'd be watching this company for a recovery coming up off the floor and starting to grow. It is now one big company. So where is their norm? Well, your average up here is two, three, yeah. 2.3 cents. Right now we're at 1.8 cents. She could get up to her high. Let's go back. I, I need to get this image in my mind. All right. So right here, folks, right here is her average. This is where we can see she sits most of the time. And that is at just about three cents. So you could get about 80% gains out of this in a short course of time. But on the long run, there's no telling what a freight company can do. I don't know how much business they're doing right now, but their income is steady, and that's what's important. So keep an eye on this for tomorrow. If you're not interested in for a long hold, you may be able to make some cha-ching just in the morning off of this. Now, that last company we were looking at didn't even have 50 trades, had 46 trades, but this company has a legitimate catalyst, and it really looks prime to me right now, folks. They've got a lot of green flags I like. This is GNRS, Green Rose Acquisition Corps, finished the day at $2.00 with over 32% gains. Now this is on the QX, the best tier on the OTC market. Very, very, very transparent. The most transparent you're gonna get. So transparent, they could easily be on the NASDAQ. They don't just audit their financials, they supply a lot of information to their investors. And of course, they've got a verified profile and a transfer agent, and they've got independent directors. Now they may have had these to uplist to the QX, I'm not sure. But if they wanna uplist to the NASDAQ, and I'm sure they do, any company on the QX wants to get to the NASDAQ, they are ready to do so. Now, this is also a cannabis company. It's a cannabis holdings company. They become what they are through acquisitions, buying other companies and property. And they want to become a vertical cannabis company, MSO. That means multi-state operator. They want to be in many states vertically, which means they want to cover every aspect of the business, from planting the seed to harvesting the plant, processing the flower, packaging it, shipping it, and retailing it in their own stores. That's a lot of acquisitions, and they've got a lot going on right now. 
So there was news today. It wasn't actually news. It was more of a company update, but they put a lot of information in there and we're going to look at some of it. But they have made some deals here recently and the company looks primed for growth, folks. Really does. What is the relative volume around this company today? <laughs> Well, that's a shocker. That's a shocker. 3.7 thousand shares is all she's been selling every day for the last month. Today, she did 14,000. It's not a very big number. You've got about 300% increase in volume. Sounds better to say it that way, doesn't it? Folks, this is under the radar. There is no doubt about it. This is under the radar. What is the share structure in this company? Oh my God, another shocker. 2 million. Am I reading that right? It is. That is 2 million shares in the float, folks. Only 17 million outstanding. Holy cow. Whew. This has definitely got my attention. Now, what are the financials in this company? I'm not sure that they're actually... The surprises just keep on coming. Look at that. You got to remember now, right? There's three zeros behind this. So they did $28 million last year, which is their first year and 25 million this year. And out of that, they got to keep over $16 million. Now that's a better profit margin. Impressive. Disclosures, we got anything over here? Uh, we had an 8K a little while ago and a 10Q today, a quarterly report. Their financial came out yesterday, as a matter of fact. Let me take a look at this together. Now we're not gonna go deep into it. I just wanna grab a few numbers here so we get a feel for what's going on. Uh, this is their assets. So we're going to look at their total assets right here. 222 million. Yeah, see they say put the three zeros behind it. So that's 222 million they have in assets. That's good. What about their uh, revenue? Uh, that's cost of goods. Where's uh, uh, net loss, net income? 14 million they lost. Okay. So they lost 14 million. What do we got here? Net income? Yeah, they lost 14 million. Now it's very possible. There's a lot of information here, folks. It starts with the accounting, but then they just go through the history. November of 2021, December of 2021. You can read everything about the company, even the bad stuff even the stuff they're worried about. They put every single thing in here. Who owns their shares? How many people? I mean, not me and you, but the institutions, the hedge funds. So there's lots of information and it's pretty easily set up here to read. It's not too difficult. You can see here on November 26, 2021, the company consummated the TheraPlant business combination. And that's one of the pieces of news that we're gonna look at. So all of this is here. So it looks really good. They got lots of assets. They did drop in revenue, but it's probably because of one of those acquisitions that they made. All right, let's go see about the news. All right, I think I got a better one than that. I sure do. Right there, all highlighted for us. So we're going back to October of last year up to November of last year. All of these pieces of news have to do with what we just read. Them combining their company with Theraplant, better known as a merger. And it finally happened. They closed it here in November. Then at the beginning of January, Green Rose Holding Company closes another purchase, True Harvest. Theraplant is a company in Connecticut. True Harvest is a company in Arizona. And because they're working with cannabis, they can't work with each other. You can't send the cannabis across the state lines. What is in Connecticut has to stay in Connecticut. So they've got two operations going right now. Then we had news come out today. And boy, there is a lot of information in this, folks. You really want to get to know the company and don't want to dive into that 10Q just read this. They did a good job here. We're going to jump into that right now. As I said, this came out yesterday. Uh, the primary focus is on optimizing inventory in Connecticut and the production capacity in Arizona. They're also improving positioning for early stage recreational market opportunities. I do believe Connecticut is just coming into the market. This is going to be virgin territory for them, if you will. First mover advantage. So they do show us here their net income loss was 14 million and they've got all the reasons here for what each of those figures mean. They did make $8 million in revenue. 
Okay, so they did make $8 million in these last three months. And compared to the same period of time last year, they were doing $7 million. So they are growing. But these acquisitions cost money, taps into their revenues, taps into their assets, and that's where you get these losses from. They're not really losing money, but they did have to put it out to grow. They tell us here that since acquiring Kinetic-based Theraplant and Arizona-based True Harvest in the fourth quarter of 2021, we have worked to expand the production at each subsidiary and enhance our positioning for the early stage recreational market opportunities in Connecticut and Arizona. While our first quarter financial performance reflects certain costs and operational interruptions associated with ramping this additional production capacity, we believe our work to strengthen our infrastructure and will help position our brands as high quality flower brands in Connecticut and Arizona's emerging recreational markets. So, so we've jumped on over here to Think or Swim to take a look at GNRS. That is a six month, four hour chart and it is a little suspicious to me, in a good way. You see this price, $10.62 in the high bubble? That's right here. If you come down to what looks like it's normal, and this goes on for a year, it does not move, folks. What you see here just keeps on going back. That's $10. Now, the name of the company, Green Rose Acquisition Core. You know, the first time I heard that name, what I thought of was a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company but they launch on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, not the OTC. But they sell their shares at $10 a share as a blank check company. That means they're doing no business. They have no company, it's just a hollow shell. It's just a ticker. And they go out looking for a private company that wants to go public, make a deal with them and boom, they're on the market. And this is when they buy in at $10, there's nothing going on. And it has fallen like a bloody roller coaster here, all the way down to a low of $1, and it's now at $2. And now they've made two acquisitions, one in Connecticut, one in Arizona, both virgin territories, where I assure you they're going to make millions of dollars right quick. The first couple of months always happens. They've got $222 million in assets. They did $25 million in revenue and got to keep $16 million. And let's not forget the most important part. They've only got a 2 million float, right? What am I missing here? This company should be up here at $10. And all these people who paid $10, they expect it to be up there. And if this was on the NASDAQ, I guarantee you, it would not have fallen down to this price. No way. So this should be up here. So I see it as a SPAC. We're buying a $10 share for $2. Now we can see another current average right here at $4. So just getting back up to there and that's where it fell from straight down, hit that low bubble and it's coming up. That would be a hundred percent gain right there. This would be a 500% gain at an entry right now. Technicals. We do have a crossover on the MACD and she is climbing. RSI is climbing strong. It is currently at 50 and the CCI is in a great position above the green and pointing up. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. So she's under the 50, falling hard, all the way down to this low bubble where she bounced. Now, I always say when a company hits a low bubble, if they have value, they're gonna bounce. People see it as a for sale sign. They do quick analysis of the company, say, whoa, what a deal, and jump on it. And it doesn't just recover, it actually climbs. But my question is, what makes this low bubble so special? Wasn't there a low bubble here? It didn't climb off of that. Or what about this one? Or this one or this one? They're all low bubbles. Why did they not bounce and this one did? I have no clue. What I do know is that it is a special bubble because it did something great for us. Look here, folks. You see this 10-day SMA? The blue one, it's actually nine days. I call it 10-day. See all these price bars underneath it? That is sad. That is the saddest position you can have on the board because you can't climb on top of anything if you can't get on top of the 10. The 10 is the thinnest, lightest SMA on the board. It's a Ritz cracker. You should be able to break it no problem. And that's what this low bubble did. This low bubble invigorated the price just enough to get on top of the 10. Once on top of the 10, it got on top of the 20. On top of the 20, it jumped onto the 50. That's what that low bubble did. So it is a special low bubble. 
MACD is climbing and it is above the center line. RSI is now in the 60s and we're still in a strong position on the CCI. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. Boy, look at that excitement. See the price here, low bubble, under the 10. And then when she got on top of the 10, boy, did she get excited, like letting the dog off its leash. Vroom, shot across the 20, launched across the 50. What was that jump? That went from $1.17 up to $1.70. So you're looking at like 55 cents in five minutes or about a 30% jump. Now it did fall 50% back. You can see that's half of that green bar. Came to the 10, bounced back up to that high point again, fell back to the 10. See how it's respecting the 10, staying on top. Then it fell hard yesterday and launched today with only 17,000 shares. This is the only problem with this stock. It's got no volume. Nobody's looking at it. I don't know if cannabis isn't getting any love. OTC isn't getting any love. I don't know what the problem is, but this is off the radar. And it's got everything going for it, right? It's got those virgin territories in Vern uh, Connecticut and Arizona. It's got two acquisitions that it just made. It wants to go vertical, has lots of money in the bank, is making lots of money selling. What's stopping this? Volume. It needs some volume. So when this gets some volume, I expect this to jump and I expect it to get to that $4 pretty bloody easily considering that's where it fell from. And then I expect it to go back to 10 because that was the other fall. We've only really had two falls on this stock, folks. We had a fall from the 10 to here and a fall from the four to here. So I expect it to go from here to the four, from the four to the 10. Absolutely. Everything really looks good to this stock this company to me. I like it. I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want to get in. However, do your DD. Don't just trust my excitement and my enthusiasm. I'm a cannabis lover, which is something to consider when the laws change, when it becomes legal, when they get banking, when it gets pulled off of the DEA's substance control list. This is going to move even more. So I think it is very depressed. $2 is a low price for a SPAC. You could not buy a $10 share on the NASDAQ for two bucks. Good luck. You're lucky if you can get them for $9.50. I'm not kidding. So I love GNRS. Pretty interesting there. We had two stocks that were cannabis. I didn't actually go out looking for cannabis stocks. They just happened to be there. And right now, cannabis isn't getting a whole lot of love. Nobody's talking about it, even though the House of Representatives passed certain bills. The Senate never got around to voting on it. Again, is this the sixth or seventh time they have refused to do their job? Boy, does that upset me. So there are some stocks for you to consider, folks. There's a lot going on out there. There just isn't a lot growing and showing. But the more DD you do, the more you're going to find. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.